Introduction How to Hug a Hedgehog I don't want to hug that one, said three-year-old Paisley as she pointed to the alligator. Brad was taking his granddaughters to the zoo, and Paisley, the eldest, was dividing the entire animal kingdom into two groups, huggable and not huggable. The koalas were huggable. The alligators were not. Brad encouraged the game as they went from enclosure to enclosure by asking, Would you hug this one? He was a little surprised when Paisley said yes to the giraffes and flamingos. He was not surprised when snakes got a no. Paisley decided that lions were huggable, blame that one on animated movies, but declared that porcupines and hedgehogs were definitely not huggable. Most would agree on that one. In fact, that's why zoos have barriers and cages, to keep us from close contact with such animals. Outside of zoos, it's a different story. We all know teenagers who look and act as prickly as hedgehogs, and have successfully erected barriers around themselves to keep us out. While we're better off leaving the unhuggable zoo animals alone, we actually want and need to have a connection with bristly teenagers, for their sakes and ours. In a zoo, we shouldn't try to bypass cages and ignore the keep-out signs. In our families, we have to have the determination and personal courage to brave all barriers and connect with even the most difficult teenagers. Wild animals are best left wild. Deep down, teenagers long for connections. They need and appreciate love and positive relationship with parents and other adults who care enough to reach out to them, despite the quills. Hedgehogs are nocturnal. They become active at dusk and spend most of the day sleeping. Does that sound like some teenagers you know? Hedgehogs eat mostly insects. They don't have a very balanced diet. Hmm. Hedgehogs don't like being caged. They'd rather be outside, roaming and exploring. That all sounds familiar as well. Hedgehogs, and some teenagers, can be stubborn creatures, resisting change at every turn. Unlike many teenagers, hedgehogs are clean and have very little smell. Of course, the most prominent feature of the hedgehog is his sharp quills, hollow hairs that can be dangerous when extended. Teenagers have similar defenses. Anyone who works in a zoo knows there are some principles that can make all the difference when working with dangerous animals. Those who work with children and teenagers know there are some principles that also make a difference. There are some painful ways to hug a hedgehog and smart ways. Believe it or not, hedgehogs can make great pets. Rules for Hugging a Hedgehog 1. Don't wear gloves. Let him sniff you. 2. Take your time. Let him relax. If he rolls into a ball and extends his quills, stay calm and be patient. 3. With both hands, scoop him up from the belly, which is covered in soft fur rather than quills. Let him explore you and become more comfortable with you. No two hedgehogs are alike, but these general rules apply to most. No two teenagers are alike either, but there are some keys parents can learn that will help. The following pages are filled with a variety of suggestions that have worked for us. They center on establishing and maintaining communication, overcoming adversity, and building self-esteem. And at the end of each chapter, you'll find invitations to act that, if accepted, can help you put into practice the principles being presented. Our hope is that this book can validate the positive efforts you're already making and provide a friendly nudge in new directions if necessary. When Brad was at the zoo with his granddaughters, Paisley's invented game was fun, but it didn't last. Our efforts to connect with teens must be conscious and consistent. Our success or failures will have lifelong consequences for all involved. We must find ways to bypass the barriers and reach out to even the most prickliest teen. Hugging a hedgehog may be a unique challenge, but it's not vital. Building positive relationships with teenagers is absolutely essential and will enrich and transform all of our lives forever.